So I hope you can hear me. Yeah, the program set minister's report fell uh, about that. <laughs> I have some bad news, but also some good news. Bad news is uh, I'm not going to be speaking about finance today. And the good news is I'm not going to be speaking about finance today. <laughs> Instead, because I, I figured anything cool about uh, liberal and finances, uh, especially our blockchain launch and our tokenomics launch, will be talked about amply over this conference this next couple of days, and I'll be happy to engage uh, in any conversations. Instead, I'm going to talk about my journey, my personal journey, what brought me to Liberland, why I'm still here today, and why I'm not going anywhere. So at the very beginning, about nine, well, nine years ago, not to today practically, I heard about Liberland, and, and I thought about myself, whoa, that's an interesting concept. A bunch of crazy Czech people starting a new country in the Balkans. You see, back then I was uh, pretty much as statist as they come. You know, I was living in my socialist paradise, proud to pay my taxes, and actually thought that the more taxes you pay, the better. You know, it shows you're doing good, you're doing something well. You know? But then I discovered Bitcoin, and then as I go down that Bitcoin rabbit hole. I read The Creature from Jackal Island, which is a really, really, uh, if you haven't read the book, put it on your list, it's amazing. It really describes the uh, creation of the central bank, the Federal, Federal Reserve, and the entire central banking system. So as I'm reading this book, I end up really confused and really kind of disillusioned, kind of, I feel betrayed because everything I thought I knew about Central ba about banking, or about about business, about my, about the, what money actually is, and pretty much fueled by my uh, really my worthless education or my arrogance, I realized it's all based and rooted in lies. You know? And I was only scratching the surface. Because and then I thought, if they're lying about this, what else are they lying about? When I mean they, I mean the whole education system where we kind of grew up and I take everything for granted. And it turns out pretty much everything. But I guess to go into those kind of things, we, we would have to change the name of this conference. So that's a topic for another day. I figure there's a lot to unlearn. You know? And unlearning is really, really, really tough because it really challenges your core beliefs. You know? And I really suggest if you have children, start early with the unlearning process. You'll be doing them a huge favor with that. Yeah, so as I'm going down this journey of unlearning and trying to like uh, get rid of my, my preconceptions, I discover again, I come across Liberland again. I'm like, oh yeah, there are those Liberlanders. That's about four or five years after, well, probably three years after I first discovered them, heard about them. So I figured, oh, let me become an e-resident. And I've never met a Liberlander, never spoke to one, and never even saw a video at that point. So I get my, my card and I, I carry it proudly with me everywhere, and I figured, this has to be something meaningful because you're part of something that really is like, so I've been carrying it around I've, and even throughout this day, never even seen a single video, nothing. I just figured I'm a Liberlander now. I have an e-card, you know, showed it to everybody, etc. And at some point as I'm going down this journey, I realized, wow, I guess I'm an anarchist now, you know. I'm not anarchist in a, in a sense that uh, like commonly used that with a bunch of angry people throwing Molotov cocktails at government buildings, but really a person who has just a desire to live without a ruler, you know, and which is really the pure sense, the pure meaning of being an anarchist. Non-aggression principle that Michael talked about, you know, don't hurt people, don't take their stuff. You know. The golden rule, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, you know, or let live and live and let live, you know. So at this point, I, I, I realized that I need to get rid of everything, all my attachments, all these, th the things that I thought that I was aspiring to. So I get rid of my company, get rid of the stupid supercars and all these things that are, and are, that are holding me down. And I'm set on a mission to find liberty, to find freedom. And it's difficult, you know, in, in this society nowadays to find freedom. I mean, it's easy to say, because we're really living now, like the quest for liberty, it's, it's because we are so um, conditioned in 
in thinking what liberty really is. We're living in a world where the consolidation of power and control is getting more and more centralized. And um, the problem with that is because through our education, we are led to believe that um, freedom, we are lucky that certain govern governments are granting us freedoms. But freedom is not theirs to give us to begin with. You know? This is a real uh, kind of mindset, kind of uh, uh, saying it's never been a government's job to give us freedom, except for protect our freedoms. You know? And uh, even like we, we are thankful to have a, our government officials for, for letting us be free, but we, we tend to forget that they're civil servants and not rulers. So at this point, I, where I'm at this point, I decided to go, I'm, a, I'm across, I'm come across the Anacropulco conference in Mexico. And I, and I thought, whoa, a bunch of anarchists in Mexico. I, I have to go there, I have to see who these people are. And I remember my wife telling me, like, oh, be careful, you know, you're gonna go there and, and they're gonna brainwash you. And I thought about it and I said, well, I hope so. I really hope, because I really need a good bath, actually, more than just a bath, you know? You know, and, and, and mindset. So I get there, I arrive at Anacapulco, and I get my first taste of a good bath, you know? And I go to the process of unlearning and relearning. And to my great surprise, I see there was a Liberland event at the conference. And that was early 2020 when this happened. So, so where was I? Um, yeah, that was at the beginning of 2020, and I didn't even know if they really exist. So I go to this event, and I meet Tom, who was giving a, well, a CS, giving a fantastic presentation, and uh, we uh, started talking. He puts me in touch with Peter, and then Peter puts me in touch with Vit, and after a brief 20-minute conversations, first thing I do, I buy my marriage, I become a citizen. And uh, the rest is, I, I don't want to say history because history is right now still in the making, but the rest is what, what, what this is becoming really. So to come to the previous questions I put, why am I still here? You know, well, the, the obvious question is, I mean, this year, you guys, I mean, this shows that this is actually real, this pipe dream or whatever it was, may have seemed at the beginning, it's become a real reality now. You know, we are building this thing. And uh, as uh, Tom mentioned, the settlement is physical, it's real, it's happening. But also, as I was explaining now throughout this, my path to looking for freedom, you know, that's what really is the reason really that brought me here. Because the fundamental basic desire of humanity is, has always been the pursuit of happiness. And I believe happiness is not possible without freedom. You know? Because you may accumulate any kind of happiness or things that make you feel happy, but uh, you're only free until you're not, you know? And this can be taken away from you at any moment, you know, unless you're free. I mean, Liberland precisely was conceived to guarantee this freedom, to vouch, this, to vouch this, or to save it, and to protect it. And to the final questions, why am I, why am I not going anywhere? And this, I thought about this quite a bit driving here today. And if I have to boil it to one thing, you know, it's because I have children. Because I think it's important, I want them to know that it is possible to live in a society where you can be free. I want them to know that it's possible to live, and important, to live with rules without rulers. And that's very fundamental. So, and Liberland really is this vision. And what we see today, and, and we talked about, like, uh, uh, about the settlement, that's a glimpse, you know, it's a glimpse into the future and where they can be. And we had setbacks, but I don't even see them as setbacks. These are victories. They actually are victories because they make our history, they make our path, they make our identity, they make our culture. We are going to be here and we are not going anywhere. We live and we let live. Thank you.